So you've decided to take this course on how to build a visual search engine based off an object detection model, specifically the YOLO X model deployed on the cloud. At the end of this course, you will be able to build a real world solution using your newly acquired artificial intelligence skills. So let's take this example product of how Amazon leverages AI in the style snap product to permit users be able to do visual searches on pictures or photos which have been uploaded. So let's pick this one. For example, we have this picture uploaded. You notice that immediately we have a set of objects which have been selected. So here you have a bag, here you have the dress, and here you have a shoe. And so the product we'll be building will be similar to this in the sense that we are going to have the detection or we're going to build an API which is based on artificial intelligence which permits just anyone be able to pass in an image and the different objects are detected. And then once the different objects are detected, we are then going to use Google search API to be able to match up these different objects with objects found on the web which are similar to the object we've selected. And so without wasting any more time, let's look at what we'll be building or what we'll be learning in this course. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss amazing content like this. First things first, we'll start with an introduction and problem understanding. So we'll define our problem, which is that of custom object detection. Then we'll look at different use cases of object detection. From here, we'll get an in-depth understanding of object detection itself and from this in-depth understanding we'll go straight away to look at previous object detection algorithms both the computer vision based object detection algorithms like the hawk cascades and the hawk algorithms and deep learning detection algorithms like the rcnns and yolo family from here we'll go on to a more in-depth analysis or understanding of the YOLO family of deep learning models. Now it turns out that the particular model we'll be building and deploying in this course is a YOLO X model. So we we'll look at the YOLO X model, which we've seen already in this YOLO family, and then we are going to check out the code structure. So there is a code used for training, which we are going to check out in this course, and we are going to understand this code structure before getting to make use of it. Then at this point, we'll look at general purpose object detection data sets. You should note that this data sets are basically what we're going to use to train the artificial intelligence models to be able to take in some image input and be able to output the locations of different objects. And so we have to take this section very seriously. And then we'll use a tool that's Remo to build this custom object detection data set. So we'll see how to build our own data set on our own problem. And then we'll look at a demo of the Yellow X performance on some test images. So straight away, we'll see how to make use of Yellow X very easily using the code base, which we've already explained on how it works. And then from here, we'll now train, evaluate, and test on our custom data set. Recall that this demo here was done on some general purpose data set, which we are going to look at. But now, we, would, after training our model, we will be able to evaluate this model and then test on this custom model, which has been built on this custom data set. From here, we will look at 1DB integration. 1DB permits us to be able to track our experiment, to carry out hyperparameter tuning, and to be able to store different store and track different versions of our data and our models. So this is a very great tool for machine learning operations and machine learning engineers who want to gain control over their different experiments. Now, we've built this model and we've tested it and it works out well. The next thing to do is to be able to call this model from anywhere in the world. So supposing you are in, say, California, so you build this model and it starts in the server somewhere in California, and then someone has to use this model, say in Delhi. You see that this model has to be made available for this user in Delhi. And so, to understand this communication between these two users, we'll have to start by understanding what HTTP is and what RESTful APIs are. So, this will permit us create this link between 
a server which contains our model and any client found anywhere in the world. Then from here, we'll use Fast API to build our backend. So basically, we're going to integrate this model into this Python backend framework, which is Fast API. And then the next step will be to deploy then this API on the cloud. And this is going to be done for free. So you wouldn't need any credit card or to pay any amount of money to be able to deploy this on the cloud. Now, after deploying the cloud and the clients are happy, they're actually using the service, they're able to pass in an input image and receive some output objects. We then have to test this model, not testing in terms of how performant it is, but how much load it can support. And then once this is done, we'll see how to integrate this in a real world app. So we'll play the role of a client this time around and say a JavaScript client who is trying to make a call on this API and we'll see the kind of outputs we can get. And then bringing us back to this, you should know that this uh, interface we have here is some web interface. And then each time we click on this, you see when you click on this or uh, when you load this image, what provides these different objects here is an API call. So the API call is made to the back end. And then once this client receives it, it's now able to display it as you could see right here. And so we're going to show you how this is done in this app integration. And then from here, we would have an end of course project, which you will do and have to submit. And as usual, there are always prizes for those who submit your work on time and correctly. And from here, we'll look at some conclusions and what next. And with this, see you in the next session where we'll get started with understanding object detection.